Welcome all my friends to the story where Batman turns into a super evil Dark Lord, Superman becomes a powerful demon, and the Justice League turns into monsters. John Constantine is awoken by his girlfriend, Zatanna, on bed as he is confused by her actions. They are having a romantic moment in their room, but as recently joined members of the Justice League, Zatanna fears for their future as Zatanna can foresee the future and she is worried. John comforts her and leans in for a kiss, and just then, the Justice League members are summoned for a special meeting at the headquarters. Superman, accompanied by the Batman and the Wonder Woman, explains the members about the recent activities of Darkseid and his alien forces as they have conquered and destroyed many a number of planets. Superman goes out of his way to justify the fact that they should attack Darkseid first, and this is the first time I'm witnessing something like this from the Man of Steel. But not everyone agrees with him as Flash points out the facts and Constantine steps forward to question the League's decision. Superman shuts down everyone stomping his decision as the final. He doesn't even listen to Luthor's explanation. According to the Superman, it is important to strike first when Darkseid is focused on other matters. Wonder Woman starts explaining the plan to the League members, but the League is unaware that Darkseid is observing all their plans against him via Cyborg. Superman calls his girlfriend, Lois Lane, the Daily Planet reporter, and asks her to be extra safe as they prepare for war with Darkseid. The League attacks, Cyborg opens an interdimensional portal, and they arrive at Apocalypse, but the problem is, Darkseid is ready. Thousands of Darkseid's half-doomsday, half-demons attack their ships, and they have no answers. We fast forward two years later, Darkseid's forces have taken over Earth. The world's population is considerably diminished, and much of the Earth is a wasteland. In a London pub, Constantine and the demon Etrigan are attempting to drown their sorrows in bottles of whiskey as John Constantine blabber out nonsense deep into the night. They are approached by Raven and a severely depowered Superman. Constantine is surprised to see Clark and slaps him because they lost everything going according to his plan. As they urge Constantine to join them to rebuild the League, they are attacked by a triad of parademons. Raven goes into a brain fade trying to use magic, and Superman can't even defend himself. Well, it's a sorry sight to see the Man of Steel failing like this, guys. It's just sad. Constantine attacks the demons with his magic, and even Etrigan burns one down after the demons disturb him. Constantine comes back to finish the last one off and analyzes Raven's condition. Superman says that he is injected with liquid kryptonite by Darkseid, and Constantine just storms off after learning they are both useless. But somehow, they convince John Constantine to hear them out. Etrigan joins them, and John takes them to his hideout. In the middle of the broken-down Big Ben, John Constantine has built a safe house. After inviting them to share his whiskey, Constantine asks Superman what exactly happened on that dark day two years ago. Okay guys, it's time to travel back in time to the darkest day of mankind and back to Apocalypse. Clark reveals that they were ambushed as Darkseid had full knowledge of their plans. Many heroes fell at the hands of the half-demon, half-doomsday creatures. Clark reveals that some of the heroes were spared and used it for other purposes. Batman was brainwashed and made to serve as Darkseid's right-hand man. Wonder Woman lost her arm. Hawkman and Cyborg died and only Shazam was able to escape. Finally, Superman was infused with liquid kryptonite to deprive him of his abilities and forced to wander his home with the knowledge of what his failed plan had brought. But surprisingly, John Constantine has left his girlfriend Zatanna to the demons as he escaped on his own. And Raven reminds him of his cowardly act. Still feeling guilty over the death of Zatanna, Constantine agrees to join the two on their mission, with Etrigan tagging along as well. Under the vision of Batman, Darkseid is using devices called the Planet Reapers to drain the Earth of its molten core, which will destabilize and destroy the planet if successful. Darkseid is still unhappy with the progress and demands a faster procedure. Batman commands Luther, who is in charge of all Earthbound plans to carry out his orders, and Luther agrees immediately. Clark's girlfriend, Lois Lane, communicates with him, updating about the Planet Reaper situation, and they both realize they are running out of time to come up with a plan to stop all the activities by Darkseid. John Constantine uses his magic to find the location of Damian Wayne, and Raven teleports the group to the League of Assassins outpost in Nanda Parbat, in the Himalayas of Nepal. The teleportation act severely weakens her. 
mainly due to her father Trigon's attempts to escape his magical prison after Raven captured him. Suddenly the group is attacked by ninja assassins, and the heroes fight back. The fight is quick and smooth, but Etrigan becomes bored with pounding down ninjas is getting too easy. And just then, the leader of the ninjas, Damian Wayne, calls them off. Damian is furious at Clark for destroying all their lives, but soon learns about Raven's condition, and he attends to Raven's needs. Once a member of the Teen Titans as Robin, Damian left following Darkseid's invasion to lead his late grandfather's organization. Apart from Raven and himself, Nightwing and Superboy and all his teammates were killed or captured. Though he wrongfully blames Clark for everything that happened, Damian agrees to join them on their quest to stop Darkseid. He also hopes that he'll be able to save his father, Batman, from Darkseid's control, or kill him if he is beyond saving. Going out of his way, Damian has given life back to the Nightwing using the Lazarus Pit, and sadly, it has backfired. The group teleports to Stryker's Island in Metropolis, where Clark's wife, Lois Lane, is in the process of recruiting other squad members for their operation. Surprisingly, she is fighting one-on-one -on -one with Harley Quinn, and fortunately, her battle skills prove enough to subdue the squad leader. They are able to recruit the Suicide Squad for their operation, Harley Quinn and her entourage, as they have been robbing the Lex Luthor supply lines and selling the items on the black market. Since Raven is having troubles again, the couple retreat to a rest area guided by Cheetah. Raven reveals that she considered suicide when Damien left after the Great Battle, and Clark was the one who stood by her. Damien and Raven reconcile their feelings for one another, and seems like we have another power couple on the horizon, guys. Darkseid's planet Reapers have been established on China, England, and Congo, Africa. Once again, the Justice League assembles a capable group to go on the offense, and this time, Lois Lane takes the lead as she has a secret informant on Darkseid's end. She explains what Paradoom creatures are, since they are very much like the Superman. Lois goes on to explain the final mission to attack Apocalypse and get it blown to pieces with a strike team. Everybody has questions, but this time, it feels like everything's going to be okay. Harley Quinn, King Shark, and Captain Boomerang hijacks a military convoy to get into Luther's headquarters, and to be honest, King Shark basically has his lunch, and that is quite gruesome. Batman updates Darkseid regarding the progress, and Darkseid leaves Apocalypse to conquer the planet of Oa by defeating the Green Lanterns. Okay, let's get talking, as Batwing, Batwoman, Batgirl, and Black Orchid fight the North Sea Reaper under the direct orders of Lois Lane and Shazam, Steel, and Superboy goes against the China Reaper. But still, no parademons from Apocalypse. John Constantine comes to the party and confronts the Swamp Thing near the Third Tower all the way down in the heart of Congo, Africa. The British slang is enough piss off the Swamp Thing and that alone is enough to alert the parademons. Everything is going according to plan. And now it's time for the main team as Clark and his team will infiltrate LexCorp Tower. After fighting through many of LexCorp's soldiers, it seems like Harley Quinn is rather enjoying herself crushing all the enemies around her with her mallet. But unfortunately, Sheila, Damien's second-in-command, falls to the gunfire by a soldier. The heroes make their way to the teleporter. They come face to face with Lex Luthor, and the group does not hesitate to attack him. But Clark stops the attacks and Luthor reveals that he's been their informant on the inside of Darkseid's organization. Meanwhile, the Congo Reaper is taken down by the Swamp Thing after a heroic battle with the Parademons, and Batman observes this and declares full force defense on the remaining England and China Reapers. Batgirl, Catwoman, and even Superboy takes mighty blows and the young heroes fall one by one in the battle. Raven gets Constantine to promise her that he will take her soul if her father overpowers her when they go to battle. Clark Kent is given a new armored suit powered with kryptonite to battle the parademons. All the heroes are powered by kryptonite-developed weapons, and Luthor arranges their transportation to Apocalypse while he stays behind Lois and the Suicide Squad. As they land on Apocalypse, John casts a spell on the group so all of them could move unnoticed to the Apocalypse forces. Batman, discovering Luthor's treachery, sends Paradooms to attack the LexCorp building and quickly notifies Darkseid of the ongoing skirmish attack by the Earthbound. Darkseid destroys much of planet Oa and returns to Apocalypse for the final showdown. 
And just before signing off, Darkseid decides to make a point by burning the lantern cores with earthbound magma. With Darkseid currently away conquering the Green Lantern home planet, Oa, Clark, Robin, Raven, John, and Etrigan makes their way to the main fortress to end the new god's reign of terror. Before they can enter, the heroes are ambushed by the Furies, the very heroes who saved the Earth from many a number of foes back in the day but now turned into loyal servants of Darkseid. The battle is a ferocious one, as the Furies were once tremendous superheroes for the Earthbound. Damien slashes the dragon head off but seems like the Furies can regenerate unlike the Earthbound heroes. Starfire attacks Raven, Wonder Woman goes off against Constantine, and Clark can't find a way to defend against the attack even, and it's just a sad sight to see. Wonder Woman is just about finished Constantine when her sword is fended off by the one and only Etrigan. Wonder Woman and Etrigan goes head to head, and as a result, and it seems like out of all the heroes, only Etrigan is capable of handling the might of the Wonder Woman. Unfortunately, Etrigan dies, but Constantine manages to free Wonder Woman from her mind control. Unfortunately, the great Amazonian returns. Now the real battle begins as Princess Diana, with her apocalypse powers, and Amazonian powers, battles the Furies with ferocious might. She stays behind to fend off the former heroes, while the remaining four head inside. Back on Earth, Lois Lane, along with the Suicide Squad, prepares to engage with the incoming Parademons but they are in for a nasty surprise as the number of parademons heading to the LexCorp Tower is just too many to handle. Going inside, they discover that Flash is still alive, imprisoned to run on a treadmill that powers Apocalypse. After Clark frees him, Flash tells what happened to him. Constantine tries to ease his pain by casting a spell. And in the process, he learns that it was because of Barry's Flashpoint incident, Darkseid returned. The team decides to move ahead and Constantine takes the lead over a powerless Clark. Good for a change, right guys? Good thing about the Suicide Squad is that they don't take half measures. Although the Parademons are coming in with an overwhelming number, the Suicide Squad are going all guns blazing. Unfortunately, they have to retreat to the hangar and Luthor puts a kryptonite shield around them. Clark and the group are running through hurdles and many obstacles. Raven uses her spells to protect the group, but, in the process, awakens her father. They find a dismantled cyborg who has been infused with the very technological network of Apocalypse, making it impossible for him to be freed. John Constantine uses a bit of techno magic to separate Cyborg from the Apocalypse Mother system, and just then, all the Apocalypse connected Furies break away from the system and return to their original selves. Just when Cyborg starts talking, Batman arrives with Darkseid. Darkseid just rips Clark's armor suit apart like peeling an orange. Batman and Damien engage in a deathly battle as Darkseid watches on. Batman seems to despise Damien, and Damien is not holding back as well. Only when Batman has Damien on his knees, and at the former's mercy, is when Batman snaps out of it. Seeing Damien's helplessness reminds Batman of his own powerlessness when his parents were killed, joining the other heroes once more. Batman is able to wound Darkseid with Damien's sword, and in retaliation, Darkseid used his Omega Beams on Batman, but Damien shields his father at the cost of his own life. Raven loses herself at the sight of her lover burning to ashes, and just then, Trigon breaks his chains and awakens from his daughter's mind prison. As a last-ditch effort, Constantine frees Trigon from Raven's prison, offering himself as a host to fight Darkseid. Instead, the demon pauses Superman, which burns the liquid kryptonite from his body. They then proceed to kill Constantine by snapping his neck, before challenging the Lord of Apocalypse. As Lois and her allies prepare to destroy the LexCorp building back on Earth, which will destroy both the Paradooms and them, she sends a goodbye message to Superman on Apocalypse. Meanwhile, the old god Trigon is unleashing against the new god, Darkseid. Now that's a battle for the ages. Darkseid is tasting his own medicine as he is unable to contain the old god. Under his own control, Batman manages to get a part of Clark's mech suit that has acts as a communicator with the Earth team to a newly self-aware cyborg who then projects this video around the chamber. Lois's death manages to free Superman of Trigon's control. 
This last act of Lois helps Superman take back control of his body from Trigon, and the two separate. Darkseid traps Trigon's essence in an orb made from his Omega beams before engaging in another fight with Superman. Superman is furious, and for the first time in my life, I'm seeing a bloodthirsty Superman, and I like it. Seemingly in the afterlife, Constantine is reunited with Zatanna, who reveals that she used her magic to make him flee from the fight and that he didn't abandon her. After professing their love for them, Zatanna and Raven revive John and Damien respectively. Raven becomes the ultimate white raven with executing the utmost healing skill of all for the love of her life. Since Cyborg requires a distraction to execute his plan, Raven and Constantine then combine their magic to give Trigon his physical form so he can once again challenge Darkseid, this time on his own, knowing he won't leave the fight alive. Trigon thanks Raven for the chance to end Darkseid and himself on his own terms. Cyborg teleports all the heroes back to Earth while he sacrifices his own life to destroy Apocalypse, obliterating the planet in a black hole. At the ruins of Titan's Tower, despite their victory, Batman reveals that the Reapers managed to drain 31% of the Earth's molten core, which will disrupt the planet's orbit and take one billion more lives before they can find a solution. Constantine informs the Flash that he needs to run back in time and create another Flashpoint, despite the speedster swearing to Iris that he'd never do it again. Though reluctant, Barry agrees that regardless of the results, while it won't be perfect, it would still be a better world than the present. Watching as their timeline gets reset, Damien and Raven share their only kiss as the heroes remain optimistic about their future as they disappear into the unknown. Accept the things you cannot change. Have the courage to change the things you can. And have the wisdom to know the difference. Wise words spoken by the Justice League and let it be known that the heroes of the Justice League sacrificed themselves a number of times over and over again for us to have the world that we live on today. Thank you for watching Second Look. Like, comment, share, and subscribe for more awesome videos. Have a nice day.